and we're live yeah beautiful so this is the view it's just finished raining hello daniel how you doing hey man i'm good I'm you pretend we haven't been talking already for the last 30 minutes sure <laughs> we haven't had any uh pre-rehearsals but yeah <laughs> <laughs> nothing like that but yeah nice and cozy now i believe so I'm thanks like, for having yeah. me on man yeah oh, they, so. yeah nice one um i'm excited man i've been uh my first guest on my um, i'm honored yeah, i believe i'm on day 38 or something now but um the funny thing is when i did this challenge a few years ago um i did actually have you in one of my videos it was it was in the facebook group but yeah it was a i think it was back in about four years ago in Bromsgrove, it was. Uh, that was. Is it that far ago? Yeah. Three or four, three, maybe. Don't make me feel that. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's been quite an adventure, though, those few years. Uh, so, uh, yeah, thanks for having me on, man. I, um, I, 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 basically, what happened this afternoon that I wanted to mention was. I had a nap and I woke up um, and I had a message in my inbox on Facebook from a woman who's been a friend of mine for at least 15 years. She's about 60 something. She used mm. to come and watch a band I used to play in um, a lot. And she was like an auntie to us. She'd bring us like a packed lunch <laughs> before the gig. Okay. <laughs> She'd bring us like sarnies and like, you know, egg mayonnaise and tuna mayonnaise and cheese and ham and sliced them up. All that good. lovely, lovely lady. And I, I, I've bumped into her in festivals and stuff like that. And uh, she sent me this video of someone in the House of Parliament really strongly insisting that everybody in the UK is going to be uh, vaccinated and the military will be rolling it out. Okay. And it scared the crap out of me a little bit. Mm. And it's not just, I'm not like a conspiracy guy, but I'm like, this is the stuff that my conspiracy friends are really into. Yeah. And talking about the time. And I'm like, I believe you, but you know, like, thanks for letting me know. But I'm not going to be one who goes on about it. Like, um, but when this particular friend of mine sent it, it's like, you know, it's affecting like not just the conspiracy nerd dudes or whatever. It's like real people, <laughs> like, you know, these people that we know who, uh, who we care about and uh, it, it's scary stuff so um i, I put I a weird yeah, angle on the whole yeah, like a conspiracy thing. thing because the youtube police might kick us off oh yeah yeah so we've got to shut up about all of that we just started well this is you know a fairly new series to the channel so yeah. <laughs> well but yeah oh, so when we get scared there are things we can do to help us calm down and i just did one before this call uh, like a breathing technique thing. It was, uh, it just brought me back to calming the fuck down and uh, being able to speak to you basically <laughs> in a way where I'm not like a bit grumpy or a bit upset. So good. I, I always say, I mean, like with the Wim Hof or even a few deep breaths, is that literally if you're going to make a decision or you're in a bad mood, literally just take a time out, five minutes, a few deep breaths, and you just change your state. And you can go from making a bad decision to a better decision. Yeah, like not punching that guy who just said that thing to you, but diffusing the situation. I actually um, had an incident last week in a really rough bar, standing in the entrance talking to uh, an acquaintance who I hadn't bumped into in a long time. And uh, we were just having a chat there. And these two rough looking guys from inside the pub came to me while I was standing there and accused me of rolling a joint on the table. Okay. But there's a guy in there with a shaved head and a beard. <laughs> and often some people uh, will come up to me and think that I'm him. And often people, it's, it's just this comedy situation. He's my evil twin, basically. And he jokes that I'm his evil twin. Um, I'm not going to name the bar, though, in case sure. you're watching. But um, I'm not the one who rolls joints, especially in a fucking 
in a bar. But these guys were, they, they, they decided to come over and uh, tell me not to do that again, but they looked like they were about to punch me. And they weren't the security guys. They were just two little, like, chavvy guys who wanted some trouble because they were bored out of their minds. They looked like they were on something as well, so it wasn't a very pleasant situation. And I just gave them this response. And they just calmed the fuck. They, just, they were just like, okay, let's not hit this guy then. But I also didn't come at them with any aggression or any, oh, please don't hurt me vibes at all. It's more like, there's no need for this. Yeah. Whatever it is you're doing, like, don't, don't even bother with this. It's just, it's just completely pointless. And uh, I guess I transmitted the energy of that to them in some way, and they backed down, even though they were like, the pupils were massive, like, you know, definitely on something. Uh, so, yeah. They, As they a result, practicing, it. like, b- being in your body rather than letting the fear and the, the shock of that really in your face threat to maybe the, the shape of your nose. Um, just, oh yeah, I practice going here instead of being here where we fight or flight thing. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I think that's the first part, part, part of call for a lot of people. They're in a, a situation like that and straight away they fight fire with fire. Mm-hmm. And I think you have to, if you're going to fight fire with fire, it's only going to end one way, isn't it? But if you can come at it a bit calmly and a bit more like, hey, I'm, I'm on your side, I'm your friend mm-hmm. type of thing, even though they kind it's, of... It, it, it's the kind of thing you learn from observing nightclub doormen who aren't dickheads. Mm. I used to work in a bar where there were 10 or 12 of them and they were they couldn't wait for the first fight of the night so they could join in but yeah but um crazy days but a lot of the guys in that role they're really good at bringing a calm to the situation that diffuses it before uh it, it kicks off um yeah it's, it's the kind of thing you learn from well i learned it from i guess men who are older than me who were twice my size, let's say. And you just watch how they deal with things. They rarely get into any scraps or any, uh, you know, any situations. Not That's just because they're big. <laughs> but yeah. if, you, if, you, if you learn a few things about how to move like a man who's big, <laughs> but you're getting fucking massive, mate. <laughs> every, time I, every time I see you on my Instagram, I was sat there somewhere, like having a coffee somewhere or a beer, as I used to scrolling through and there's this shirtless man <laughs> that's not what it looks like it's just my mate <laughs> good lighting and stuff you know i mean i'm, I'm not that tall in height but you know i'm, I'm five ten height of champions but yeah i'm uh You're just like the most uh consistently working out man in my circle i think yeah keep keeping keeping on with the discipline but that's why um I mean, a lot of people, meditation and going to the gym probably don't go hand in hand, but they do because I always say, like, if you meditate, it just helps you focus. It brings mm-hmm. a um, a sense of focus. And when you're in your workouts, it's, it's, you're going to get a better workout because you, you're more in the zone. Yeah, you're not in so much resistance to the work that you're doing as well. You're just allowing it. You're like, this is normal for me. I, I, I push like this. I push so, back on the weight of life or the weights in the gym. In this way, this is how I do it. So when did you start meditating? When did it came into your kind of thing? And... It was around the same time that I... I accidentally clicked on something in, on YouTube that got me into this whole like picking up chicks thing. Um, cause some of the guys in that business were talking about it and it, it seemed to be a, a topic that, that came up a lot on various different coaches content. And before that, the only time I'd ever come across that 
word even meditation it was always associated with some picture of a pretty girl on a rock in this pose like this or someone sat by a tree and some leaflet or something and it just came across as something like a, like a religious thing or something you just sit there and do nothing and you just pretend that everything's fine like what the fuck's that so i didn't take it seriously at all um but when i realized what it actually was through these uh characters these pickup coaches really um that was when i was like okay so that's on my radar now then i met this one guy who was a coach um, and i hung out with him quite a bit we became pretty good friends and uh he had this calmness about him that it transpired had come from like being a monk and really like doing it properly like learning about it and studying and uh, living that life and so there was him and a few other sources but i guess he was the main person that inspired me to get into it so then i went on a that that 10 day thing <laughs> the torture camp in fact you you've done this right so yeah i did it five years ago yeah um yeah i mean um that was probably one How of the was it for you? Done, done, done mentally for sure mm. Incredible. Um, completely distraction free apart from all of that noise in your head it's so challenging it, but it, even though it was so challenging it reveals so much to you yeah it's not do you have the, uh, the uh, roommates i had a roommate yeah i know nothing about him i didn't even look at him you know like we didn't look at each other we just knew we were in the same room we might see each other's feet walk past us you know <laughs> looking down you know you really I, I, took the whole thing seriously. We followed all the rules. We didn't have like midnight feasts, like Marmite on toast or anything like that. But I did steal <laughs> Marmite and toast from the breakfast and put it in my, wrap it in a um, kitchen roll and put it in my jacket pockets. So I was so bored <laughs> and so just wanting to distract myself all day long. I'd sneak off and eat some Marmite on toast, like down <laughs> in the, the, the bottom of the field, like where there's no one there. <laughs> that was how I passed the time, Marmite on toast. Did you yeah. do it on a, um, in England? Well, it's um, a dreadful experience, but yeah, it, it's recommended, you know. Did you do it, the one in uh, in England? At, I forgot the name of the place. Near, not far from Wales. Somewhere near Hereford, I think. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah, I, I had to take a bus to Hereford. After. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, yeah, I went to that one. So, yeah, same place. Probably the same little Chinese guy at the front. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just um, in, in fact, I thought about going back last year, um, and I realized I was this year actually, yeah. That we've I realized I, I don't, I can't be asked really because I can just do like just rent a house in the rent a little like an Airbnb in the countryside, or and we'll go camping somewhere out in the forest or in the you know, somewhere where there's mountains and stuff, and go and do that. But I didn't do that either. <laughs> so instead, I just um, got into the routine of the rooftop. So the rooftop where I lived in Budapest last year, there's got some grass there that was mostly dry until the winter came. And I'd, so I'd sit on, sit on the roof on, on the grass uh, uh, for an hour in the mornings, like with, with, with my morning coffee, unless it, uh, it was a hangover day then uh, I wouldn't do it at all. Fortunately, only the first two weeks of those three months were hangover days. I soon got bored of uh, the Budapest chaos. Uh, it's not as cool as it used to be. Have you been? I've not, but it is on the, uh, it's on the hit list, for sure. It's all right to go for a, a long weekend or a week or two even, but it's not a nice place to live. All my Hungarian friends... <laughs> I'm going to be complaining about what I'm saying. Well, they all know that I say this. I say it to their faces. And they're like, they understand why. It's a nice place to visit, but it's dark. It's, it's uh, the people are cool, except for the people who are trying to rip you off, scam you, and don't like you because you're a foreigner or a tourist. And 
there's a lot more of that there now than it used to be when I was eight years ago. All oh, right, it's a, it's gone a bit more more scammy. There's a lot more uh, tricks and scams and like drug dealers on the streets in the tourist areas and aggro and really drunk, fucked up stag parties and obnoxiousness. Although this year, different story. Everybody's doing that. We've just got the masks on now. <laughs> well, yeah, and they're closing the bars at 10 p.m. That's well, they're doing that in the UK as well. They are, yeah, yeah. For all you guys who don't know, uh, David does. Uh, you don't live in England, do you? UK anymore? Mm-hmm. I'm out here in Poland. And you've lived outside of England, UK for a while now, haven't you? Most of the last 10 years, yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, you escaped. <laughs> yeah, I guess I did. Yeah, I mean that was. I guess that's a big part of my backstory. Uh, I had a printing company that was doing really well, and then one day it lost its page one ranking on Google. So we stopped having new customers, and there was nothing we can do about it. People always say, "Couldn't you do this or that?" No, no, we tried everything. Um, so then the, the business had to close in a few months. It was pretty successful, so I got to travel. It was, it was like a passive income dream, like working for a very small amount of time each week for a decent amount of cash each week, living in Budapest and coming to Poland a lot and Amsterdam and Barcelona and places like that. You sort of live in the, uh, you've already done the kind of influencer Instagram lifestyle. Back in yeah, the but without the influencer or the Instagram, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like um, the four hour work week, I guess I was one of the first wave of the four hour work because I, I think I got my work week down to 10 minutes. I had a really good team of people who were very loyal and just, you know, one of my best business tips is hire people who are cleverer than yourself or have special talents that you don't have. So you've got all these extra abilities and uh, really look after them, you know, be really cool with them. You know, fly in once a year and take them for a pint you know? yeah <laughs> we probably did a lot more than that but yeah yeah it was a really nice uh situation that sadly came to a completely unpredicted unforeseen set of circumstances um so then the money ran out soon enough and i was living in krakow in a 12 bed hostel dorm trying to figure out what the fuck i'm going to do next how did you meditate in that? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, you know, it was very, very difficult, especially when I was um, drinking like an absolute motherfucker, really, because I was just like numbing myself because it was just such a shock. You know, like I thought that I'd made it. You know, I thought, wow, I've got this really nice flat. I've got this girls, girls, girls. Um, and I said girls, 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 but three, like for a reason. Um, by coincidence, it's just the name of a song. Um, money, girls, drinks, party, lifestyle, nice flat in the middle of Budapest, just going out all the time, loads and loads of friends, and just the most wonderful times. Like, just I, I couldn't believe how amazing it was. I used to, like, in the morning, I'd wake up and leap out of bed, get in the shower, and then, like, practically run out of the house. And, okay, what now? Like, what fun am I going to have today? Um, it was incredible. And that all fucked up overnight. So then I'm living in this 12 bed dorm, and it was like, Winter was coming as well. It was like October, then November. It was, oh no, when is running out? I'm in this horrible living situation, about two and a half, three months or something. Um, meditation was pretty much something that I thought about a lot, but uh, didn't do. <laughs> I can imagine. Because yeah. it was just too much. I was just, it was too much of a shock at that time. It really was. It was, uh, I'm glad it happened though, because. The way I was, the way I lived back then with the money and with the success, I wasn't exactly like going going to the gym and eating like bananas and uh, you know it was just like vodka, champagne, Hold on, yeah, yeah, yeah party, the, like, kebabs and burgers and hanging out, going to the thermal spa bath. So, yeah, that's not exactly. Oh, and just chain smoking like crazy. Back then, it was normal to smoke like two packs a day easily. Yeah, imagine two packs a day. Like, just absolutely disgusting. And people would still, like, girls would still sleep with me. 
that's how that, 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 that situation was. I had a mate who I first met in Krakow, but he lived in Budapest at the same time as me. And he told me that, um, I'm not sure how much I believe him, but he always jokes that um, he, he didn't brush his teeth for a month when he lived in Budapest. He didn't have to. He was still getting laid because he was just having the time of his life. You know, when your energy is so on, <laughs> so like in the zone all the time, money, girls. I'm doing it all wrong. I mean, I'm whitening my teeth sometimes and... You know, it's really like, you're doing what like me and this mate of mine could have done but we just i think it was because we were um in our 20s to be fair i'm a bit older than him so in my 20s at least i didn't have that kind of fun i really had uh, a shitty working life really and um it was just all about the weekends and yeah you know like pounding pills and uh I lived in Birmingham. It's a bit grim there, even in, in July. So it was like an angry place and like, uh, it wasn't sunshine and free money and you know, all that nice stuff. So when I, when I discovered that, when I found myself there, it was like, I was just so immature about it. I was just too excited about it. You know, I, 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 I didn't have like a mentor or somebody to tell me to, look, this is ridiculous. Like you're successful now. Like enjoy it. Don't yeah. enjoy it the way you think that you're enjoying it. Like because there are better ways to live. So through that experience, I guess I I had this epiphany about calmly accepting what you want rather than letting it overexcite you, and that that can serve you really well when success is like making itself known to you, uh, uh, an opportunity is there. You're not like, oh, wow, she's hot. Wow, if I could get her, my life would be complete. I would look like a real man. My friends would think I'm like the boss. No, just be like, oh, she's hot. Yeah. These are the girls that I meet. Not, oh, wow. Just, oh, cool, she's hot. This, or, like, wow, there's an opportunity to do this work here and I get paid this much for it. Cool. Wow, yeah. if you get this job and you care about it too much and then you, fuck it up in some way so just treat that which you want as normal that's just it's kind of keeping staying uh, neutral isn't it in a way and not being that overexcited killing the candy store when something nice or good happens and keeping yeah the, the, the root of it is in um you're not accepting it um, it's resistance mm. if you can't believe it's happening like, oh my god wow i can't believe how awesome this is yeah you can't believe how you can't believe it you know, so you just kind of fuck it up yeah so um, it's like as john cooper said uh and you can tell the audience who john cooper is um those who brag about their conquests or their achievements the, the those who talk about all their shags that they had and all that, they talk about it all the time because they can't believe it's happening to them. They, they don't believe they deserve it. That's it. They don't believe yeah. they deserve it. When I first worked with John in Barcelona, I was very excited about, I was in that time of my life and all I could talk about really was all these girls. Oh, I met this girl the other day, went to my place within 10 minutes of meeting you. All, all these stories like this. He was like, Dave, all you talk about is like, shagging <laughs> on me. Like you could talk about it like this much because you don't believe you deserve it you yeah you've hacked, you've hacked the system and i was like oh yeah yeah you're right it should just be normal right what and i thought i had hacked the system because i was i'd learned from these like pickup coaches you know yeah that was just the beginning so but John Cooper, that's how you came across me, you mentioned. I believe I followed him and seen some of his work. And then I know you did some collaborations with him and then brought me to yourself. And then I thought, oh, this David David T guy seems pretty cool. Uh, and I think we, we got talking and I think, I think I booked a Skype session with you. And yeah, we vibed well. And I thought, yeah. And then I think a few months after that, this was four years ago, uh, we we met in Bromsgrove, didn't we? So yeah, that's my hometown. My little uh, 
village. Yeah, it's like a bad little place. But yeah, yeah, you came down and uh, <laughs> bumped into some of my old friends, one of them quite randomly. Yeah. Yeah. And you, um, I think you've been traveling or something the night, but I, you know, I was out with you and your friends, and I remember it like it was yesterday. Like, I think you left because yeah. you was tired or something, and I was like, oh, I'll stay here. I'm, I'm not up until late anyway. And your friend was like, yeah, let's, let's go down the strip club. <laughs> I'm okay, I'm like, what? Hang on, what? If there's no, nah, no, are you sure? Because there's no strip club in Bromsburg. I'm sure he said something like that, or something along those lines. Oh, right, that was John. He, he likes going to the strip club in Birmingham. That's like a yeah, that five, was, yeah so let's get five, a or something that's there. right. So, I used to go out for beers with him about probably 12 or 13 years ago in Bromsgrove. And that's something that he was still doing back then. Yeah. He still hasn't grown out of that. I, and I, I went with him a couple of times. Yeah. He used to go to the street. In fact, I used to rent a bungalow with him when I was 18, 19. Yeah. We, we were both the same age. And we were just, we were just uh, ridiculous. We were like the, probably the least cool. We were like the least cool guys in the whole of Bromsgrove. It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we just had no sex. <laughs> that's why strip clubs were a tempted option, I guess. That's yeah, why. yeah. Girls, girls would actually talk to us in strip clubs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the good old days. How things have changed. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. So going back on to meditation, I mean, if you used to, because um, you do your weekly Zoom sessions, don't you? I do them almost every day. Every day, every day anyone books one, um, there will be one. Yeah. So, but yeah. Um, is there like a specific practice people you'd recommend to try, or that one that works for them, or there's one that you do? Yeah, I mean, I teach a uh, combination of methods or techniques that work well together um, to really locate the tension on the body and release it. Like I'm noticing now I'm quite tense in my arms. I'm actually holding my hands like that so I can just check that right now. So there are two different main things. One is like when you actually sit for like 10 minutes or an hour if you want and actually do these techniques. or when you're out and about, uh, I mean, your normal daily life, um, for example, if you find yourself in a conversation with someone and you notice that you're a bit tense, you can locate the tension, and release it, and then the energy can flow a bit better. You feel more relaxed in your body rather than in your head. But the pl place to practice that really is at home. And what we do is we just start by releasing the shoulders, checking that it's hanging softly off the sides of, of the body and scanning down. It's just about checking that you're not using any effort to hold yourself in any way. So scanning down your arms to the hands and fingers, and the base to the tip of each finger and thumb. And just see if you can release each one, just make each one just a little bit softer. Go around a few times with each finger and thumb and each hand and the hands. And you start to notice that because your hands are in a fully rested state, you're not using or leaking any energy anywhere so therefore the, the energy is accumulating you start to notice how powerful you are there's like a potency that's brewing in your hands and you just spend some time just observing that you do the same with the forehead the jaw chest look, everywhere basically but the hands is a really good place to start because your hands are powerful there is energy there and you use your hands to shape the world around you all day long so just to let them be in a fully rested state and just getting familiar with how that feels. So it's just getting familiar with your potency, but this calm, potent power that's like ready for you to dip into whenever you need it. But if you live a really distracted, uh, distracted life, you're in your head all day long, or you're on your phone all day long, or you're working all the time, thinking about stuff all the time, or distracting yourself with video games or food or whatever it is that you do, you're not going to be experiencing this power. You're going to be in your head or just distracted even from your, your head. So you live where all your fear is, all your anxiety. 
confusion and chaos. The power is down here. So it's just learning how to be comfortably still. And that then translates to how you carry yourself when you do your normal daily things, like going for a walk or doing your work even, or interacting with customers at work or clients or friends or new people. Because you've been spending time getting familiar with the energy, with your potency, your inner calm, you're able to carry it with yourself in a more comfortable way. And it shows, it shows in the way you walk, it shows in the way people receive you and the way you receive people. Your internal environment becomes more comfortable to you. So you become more welcoming. You let you more. You feel better about bringing people into it. I, that's, yeah, that's I, I agree because um, going back to that the passion, I remember 10 days of that, the uh, 10 day meditation retreat, and some people did notice a difference in me, some people didn't. Just said, Oh, there's something different about you. Don't know quite what it is, but there is. But even just from myself doing like a 10 minute meditation session, I feel calmer. I feel like just any kind of anxiety or any kind of worries I've got. Um, is... it, it puts you back in the room instead of in this. Yeah, in the monkey boys box. The monkey brain, it puts you back in the room. Exactly. That's what it does. And being able to do it on the fly is the. Uh, the superpower like to be able, to be able to induce that state of calm sometimes even if in a particularly challenging situation it can be harder especially if it's a new type of challenging situation so if it you know like not just a challenging situation but maybe a surprising unexpected opportunity or challenge for example guys coming up to me starting on me in bars um responding to them in that, to them in that, that very calm way. If that's a thing that you encounter normally in your life, because that's the type of places you go or the work that you do, then you, it's easy for you to go there with practice. But sometimes something unexpected will happen and you're thinking, oh, the meditation thing isn't working. It is, it will help you to calm down quicker. If you just remember to bring your awareness into the body and check your breathing, slow down your breathing and all of this. Find where on your body you're holding that attention soften it and before long you'll be back in the zone but yeah life is going to continue to throw all kinds of unexpected situations at you that you've never experienced anything like before <laughs> so it's important to prepare yourself for them because a lot of the time it just completely overwhelms people and they can't handle it you know, like the adversity that i came through when my crazy party life abruptly end, um, abruptly ended um yeah, if I'd been practicing this stuff before that happened, I might have handled the, uh, the aftermath in a much more considered and intelligent way. Yeah, it took me a while to get into it. How long, if some people was new to meditation, they want to start getting into it? Could you suggest maybe a time frame they need to do? How often they need to do it each yeah. day, each week? Or yeah, we, um, the only key really is to remember to do it each day. And of course, most people just simply don't, or they try it once and they don't really understand what they're doing because they haven't been taught the technique properly by a proper teacher that is using an app or they're just doing it without any kind of of a guide they try it once and they don't have some kind of profound effect so they think oh it doesn't really work or I'll try it once um doing it every day the first few times under guidance there are plenty of youtube channels out there with like, guided tracks a lot of them are very good uh, the ones to avoid by the way are the ones with any kind of music playing um because that's a distraction the only reason you need any sound on a guided track is so that you can hear the voice of the person telling you what to do or 
opening you up in whichever way that, that, that they do. Um, but yeah, there are some very good things. And of course I do my thing. You know, so my live workshops, uh, live meditation workshops.com. I'm in the process of, well, I've built my studio pretty much now. It's, it's there <laughs> in the, the other side of the room. Um, I'm in the process of actually doing some voice recorded stuff put on YouTube. I might even do um, this online course thing. In fact, I probably should really. It's, uh, a few people have asked for it and I just haven't done it. So yeah, you I should. Do a, a bar fight specific meditation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know. Do not kick his head in. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call him a C U N T. Three. Oh, imp important component of, or rather, a very good ingredient that will help I mean, meditation is the Wim Hof breathing technique. That's really, yeah. really good because it puts you in your body, just puts you bang in the body. So you spend less time trying to. Get away from your thoughts and feel the body. It just it's like the just puts you there straight away. So you and plus you get all the health benefits of doing all that deep breathing stuff. So all of my online workshops, we we do that at the start and then in the middle as well. So it's like so we start with the breathing technique, we get to the meditative state. And yeah, about halfway through, we'll usually go like poof, deeper like that so it's like then the guys are like oh you can see them really falling asleep but guys i know that you all want to fall asleep now just don't follow that <laughs> don't follow that calling to sleep it's just your your mind playing your tricks on you just yeah focus. you say that actually because when i was on that zoom session with you a few a couple of months ago uh, did the Wim Hof and then we did some meditation. I mean, towards the end of the meditation, I was I was drifting off. Yeah, like, I remember you saying, yeah. On the review you wrote, you wrote that. Yeah, <laughs> you really fell asleep. <laughs> it's normal. It's normal. It's what people do because it's because the state, uh, the brainwave state that you're in. I mean, meditation. It's the same brainwave state you're in when you first wake up in the morning. And all you want to do when you wake up in the morning really is just have another ten minutes. Don't you, you want to fall back to sleep? So. It puts us, puts us in that state. So, beautiful thing I've learned to do in the morning is to use that brainwave state when I first wake up and get my ass off the bed and stand here by the window, open the, so just breathe in all the air that's out there in that brainwave state. And then you kind of arise out of it and you just, yeah, I'm just calm all morning. Beautiful. Really, really nice. That's a little life hack, actually. Like, get your ass off the bed and don't check your phone. Don't go and make your coffee. Go to the window and open the window and breathe. It's a really nice way to start the day. And then go back to bed if you want, but at least give yourself that, do that experiment. Really nice. That's a good tip for people who need to wake up early and who struggle, i.e. me. Ten breaths, yeah, 10 deep breaths from the window, from the biggest open, most open window that you've got in the house. I've got one here that's like floor to ceiling. It's fantastic loads of air even when it's freezing cold in fact that's pro probably the best because that wakes you the fuck up but actually it was wim hof method that uh it was you who brought my attention to it i mean i knew about wim hof and his his um his achievements what he's done i you know out of this world because he, he climbed mount everest with just some Flip flops and a, his underpants, or something, something. yeah, yeah. <laughs> with his dick out, yeah, yeah, it's a great what he's doing, yeah. Uh, so I knew about his cold exposure and everything he's done like that, but I didn't, I never knew about the breath work. And then when we did that meditation, it's like, I'm getting high, man, huh? this is all right, you high, it gets you, high. Uh, and I do it now every now and again if I just need it, need that quick reset, I need that, oh, I'm just feeling a bit, a bit stressed, a bit. A bit annoyed or anything, I just write ten minutes. Let's just do some Wim Hof, and like you say, al alongside that with meditation, it's it's definitely um, it's definitely a practice I can recommend for people. Mm. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's really nice stuff. Yeah, I'm going to do it tonight before I go to bed. In fact, 
<laughs> one of the reasons why I love doing my live daily workshops is because I get to do the Wim Hof thing. It's like some days I just forget to do it. On the days that I do it, it just happens to be the days that I work. So that's pretty much every day, apart from like Monday and Tuesday, are usually pretty quiet, which is fine. Um, yeah. So I've been, since I've started doing these workshops again, which has been the last four weeks now, I've been doing it more. And I think, it's, well, I know for sure that's contributed to me uh, I've, uh, quitting smoking cigarettes. Um, I recently quit alcohol completely and I haven't felt this good in years really really nice because I, I realized that an afternoon ritual that I had of uh, having a break in the early afternoon go for a walk and then have a, an espresso and a beer that beer numbs me mm. and it, it's just like a, a default go-to snack is a beer here like I'm, I don't have to go back to work and I have a boss who's going to yell at me if I smell of a beer um, so sometimes that beer becomes three beers which is my limit in the afternoons anyway. But then that would just fuck up my mood for the rest of the day. I'm kind of numb. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I feel fantastic now. Plus, when you're drinking alcohol, your system can't absorb all the nutrients from your food properly. So just feel kind of shitty all the time. Even if, if you're drink a small amount, or at least in my case, the beer, at least. Beer, and in my case, some people say that you can drink a glass of red wine in the evening that's really good for you i'm not convinced i don't think wine is good because it contains alcohol alcohol is just shit really um i think a red wine's a good 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 to sleep but i, mm. I think whether it's good to do i know just people have a glass of wine every, every night don't they it's like their mm. evening ritual but it's the ritualistic thing with drink. It's uh, like you hang out with your friends and you have a beer. It's just what you do. There's no, there's never any conversation about should some water be better or some tea or some orange juice or something. It's always just let's drink the thing that's going to fuck things up. It's just the default. And uh, I've realized a few times over the years that that's the case. But recently, a combination of events including an injury that I sustained while falling drunk um, on ice. How the hell you fall? How the hell you fall drunk on ice in the middle of August? I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but I did. <laughs> it's kind of a long story, but there was ice. It was indoors, but uh, <laughs> it was just ice that was spilt on the floor. Didn't slip in the street. And it was, it just pissed me off. I'm like, um, if I not if I, and I had a drink that night. I wouldn't have landed the way I did. I messed up my rib and my elbow. Yeah. I thought, well, I can't be this drunk who's falling over and injuring himself. So, yeah, forget that. No more of this. That plus a, a few things as well. I just, uh, I'm way happy enough. Uh, I, th yeah. I think the thing is with alcohol is, is people use it as like a tradition thing. It's like it's a social lubrication to get you in the mood and, yeah, what I've noticed is I'm actually less likely to want to be social in some some retrospects because yeah, I feel it puts you more in your head and you feel like you have to be a certain way. With if you just go in there sober, it's like oh, well, whatever happens happens. And, uh, it took me a while to get to grips with that because I thought for a while that the reason it destroyed destroyed my confidence was because. Uh, when people meet me, they're going to make a drunk version of me, which isn't exactly my best me. Mm. But it, it really made a lot more sense. I really got on board with uh, quitting it as a social lubricant when I realized that it's a very good social lubricant for people who, like for meeting people who are also drunk. Mm. You know, like anyone who's not drunk just doesn't want to doesn't want you anywhere near them really or is it someone who takes care of themselves who isn't impressed by man who even though you might be able to carry yourself very well what drug and all that even just the smell of alcohol is like an automatic thumbs down for a lot of people and it can also be intimidating for certain people as well depending on what your 
your personality is like I and mean, it can be I mean, intimidating or a nuisance in some way mm. one of the main things that you lose under the influence of alcohol is your sensitivity to well you don't listen very well i remember an, uh, an interview i watched on uh, on youtube that was the bass player of deep purple on there and the, the interviewer asked him if they still drink like that they were famous for back in the 70s and he said well we still have um have a drink after the show but when we're in the studio we don't drink at all because in the studio you really have to listen to what each other are doing and with the drink there you, you're not so interested in what everyone else is doing you're interested in what you're playing and so the music doesn't come out as, yeah. as good as it it's the same in social situations um i used to get a little bit like a center of attention thing going on with me mm becomes more of an approval seeking drunk than uh, a genuine person um so yeah it i just decided no i'd rather get along with the nice quality of people that i socialize with now most of whom aren't massive drunks <laughs> it's great we do different things i find it brings out i mean i'm a bit of a i'm kind of a bit of a clown anyway it comes to my sense of humor but some of the things i find it yeah it uh 10x is that so mm-hmm. i'm clown mode on steroids basically when i'm having a drink i'm, I'm kind of a happy go lucky drink for the most part mm-hmm. so um i've i not gonna be wrong i know when i go out and i have some drinks and the, the intention is to go out and get drunk i'm gonna have fun but that's all good but you know for the night but then the next day i'm paying for it yeah so yeah, it's rough as hell hangovers and the older you get and the more hangovers you've had the worse they get yeah yeah absolutely and not just a little bit worse either (laughs) yeah i definitely have wasted some days of my life just being unable to do anything for a whole day and then not be able to sleep the next night either yeah it's just dreadful stuff yeah i decided enough is definitely enough with that shit really it was just absurd the amount of because like here in poland the beer is cheap as well so it's like it's like nothing it's just it's not even like the cost of it is a, a factor in helping you quit whereas in uh, i mean britain it's like five six pound a pint and well in some, yeah it some cities, where you are yeah yeah uh, it's just absurd i pay about or paid about a third of that i guess in general yeah or less less than a third Damn. Yeah, I mean, you, you, I think the price of a standard beer in Warsaw is about one pound sixty. Fucking amazing! It's, it's just, yeah, and it's strong. It's like five point four percent, whereas in Britain the standard lager is three point eight percent or three point six yeah. or something. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, easily done, then, isn't it? Really? It's yeah. Fun. It's very easily, yeah. So it's it's just the way I've managed to quit the habit of having that the afternoon beer, and also not joining in with the the nighttime stuff anymore. I'm bored of nightlife anymore completely. Um, it's basically just being really excited about and in love with how great I feel all the time now. Yeah. Like in my body, I mean, like my head too, of course, but um, walking outside and being able to like smell and taste the air and, and seeing everything, being more present as well, not being like, oh God, shame of the hangover, just feeling like I feel alive. It's really, really nice. Uh, it's very sustainable as well. It's not something that's going to make me sick you know <laughs> not drinking is not going to make you sick so it's uh it's a sustainable thing it, it's uh it's easy it's cheap as well not drink so i like it a lot yeah and it certainly ain't boring i, th- I think it's just drink is you know it's, it is good in moderate i think it's okay in moderation i mean i'm quite lucky that 
I don't miss what I don't really have because I, I don't really mm-hmm. drink that often. And when I do around like special occasions and Christmas, it's it's okay. I'm all right. All right. I'm going to feel a little bit rough. But like back in my early twenties, pretty much every, uh, every weekend I was on it, you know, it was just the norm Friday, Saturday, let's just get hammered as possible. And it's now and again, it's, it's okay. And I enjoy it. But for the most part, I, if if I could go the whole year without drinking, it wouldn't bother me. Yeah. Does he not feel like you're missing out on, any, on anything? No. Yeah, but with me, it was always the fear of missing out, especially because I'd made so many friends on nights out. So like every Friday night, last year especially, this year it's been a different situation, the lockdowns and all that. Um. Friday night, the phone will be like, hey, Dave, join us at so-and-so bar. Where are you tonight? All different people. And it'd be like, oh, I really want to stay in tonight. And then, okay, Friday night, I usually didn't go out. Anyway, I don't like Friday nights because too many crowds and all that. Um, but yeah, lots of invitations. And there's always the next birthday party. There's always something happening that you've been invited to. I mean, you've gone out and socialized like I am. And all very nice people, but all people that I met in the pub. Yeah. So, I mean, yes, they all have lives outside of the pub. We all, we all do. But the thing that we do when we hang out, it's not like, let's go kayaking or let's go you know, paint some <laughs> watercolors. It's always, let's have some drinks and smoke some cigarettes. So it's, uh, So now I'm in the business of, doing other things and meeting people to do different things. And my camera is quite central to that. I bought this nice lens for my camera and I'm getting into making video stuff and photographs. What was uh, your what's your camera at the minute? Sorry? What is the camera you've got at the minute? The been... camera is the Canon 80D. But that's not as important as the lens, which is a Sigma Art 20 mil jobby. So it's really, really, really good. So F1.4, so it can see in the dark, basically. Okay. It's a really light lens, like a really fast lens, rather. Um, yeah, I bought it during the lockdown as an investment, and uh, I've hardly used it to be honest. But, uh, the picture is—it just makes it, it makes the camera amazing, or oh, it realizes the potential of the camera because the camera is just one part of it. The lens does all the work. Really. The lens is the important component. I'm looking at the Sony uh, ZF1. Uh, as a vlogging account at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not that much of a nerd about it, really. I don't know much about them, but I know how to use my camera. You know, I've really mm. got to know and I've, I've had it for four, four and a half years now, so I should know what I'm doing with it. But I'm not a great photographer, but I know how to use the camera, so I know what to do with the lens and all that. Uh, but there are so many people out there who take much more beautiful pics than me. I'm, I'm inspired by them. I don't know how they, I don't know how they do what they do. Some of the photographs that I see, but um, I quite like the stuff that I do anyway. It's more raw, so not so much post processing and photoshopping and all that. I try to keep things very true to. No Snapchat filters now. No, unfortunately. Not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So, in fact, after this call, I'm going out around the streets because the streets are wet. Yeah. I want to do some night, night shots. I might do a yeah. video while I'm out as well. Oh, awesome. No bar fights, though. No, no, no. I'm staying away from the bars. <laughs> Thursday nights in Warsaw can be pretty brutal, actually. And I live right in the middle of town, but fortunately, I live on the side where the bars are not. So I'm on the opposite side of all the nightlife. That's really, really nice. It's not even uh, a nuisance to me. I don't even have to walk past drunk idiots so, uh, kicking broken bottles across the street. So um, where could people find you if they want to look you up and get maybe some meditation coaching? Also, <laughs> uh, place to look is <laughs> Facebook. I'm on Facebook. I have a Facebook page, Your Meditation Coach. And uh, it's 
there's lots of information there. Oh, no, I should give the information, really. Yeah, I'll put the links down in this um, in the description. Okay. I mean, like I, I should just mention, if anyone's watched this far, by the way, you're, <laughs> you're amazing. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> for that half a person who did, uh, I'm sure they're a complete and whole person. Um, the way I'm I'm teaching this stuff is so that it's accessible to all. It's not some kind of religious practice. It's not something that doesn't work. It's something that everyone who has attended the workshops has reported some kind of positive effect and found it worthwhile. It's just a combination of techniques that I've compiled from all these years of practicing it that just simply solve the problem of being too tense and being all up in your head and being too anxious and too nervous so that you don't let all this chaos and bullshit and crap of life um, destroy you at least. But most of all, it's to allow you to thrive because you're connected with your power and you can fall in love with what you're doing rather, rather than being in resistance all the time and coming from a place of shame or worry about what might, might go wrong. It's about tapping into and carrying with you comfortably and becoming very familiar with and connected to your sexy potency. There you go. Bit of, bit of, uh, but I'll do with a bit more sexy poetry. potency. Sexy yeah. potency, yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah. People need to be able to look at you and go, yeah, that guy or that girl. She, you know, she knows what, what's going on. She knows what, it, what it's about. Some people, you look at them and they're just terrified of being where they are. They don't look like they, they, they've chosen yeah. to be where they are. Yeah, so... Um, and the, the place where you always are is in your own skin. So you've got to be comfortable there first. That's where this. It's very true. I mean, um, there's a lot of people. Um, they're, they're probably just maybe if you're a bit nervous or suffering or a bit anxious in that moment, the people around you who you're with are probably the same. Um, just there might be even they might have more anxiety in that situation um mm -hmm. i yeah. think um it's something that not putting expectations on people to be as let's portray a thought but basically people you go into you, you meet people and you think everybody is everybody's all right it's just you just suffering like you're not feeling mm -hmm. um but they've probably got their own crap going on and you know in the head or whatever or worried about what they're, they're gonna have for dinner mm. <laughs> they've got you know everybody's kind of fighting their own battles at the end of the day and i think it's you think everybody everybody's got the shit together but it's not not simply the case uh. Yeah, we all think we're the only ones who are struggling, right? We're the only ones yeah. who don't have a shit together. Yeah, uh, that's it. Yeah, that's it. The, uh, well, the more you get to know people properly, the more people you, you know as well, the more you realize what people are really like. It's all of this like, stuff that you imagine people to be like that just gets destroyed, that imagination. So then you start dealing with the facts about people. So... Like one thing we didn't mention is that I used to teach, I still do it a bit actually, teaching men how to get along better with women. And um, I was always very much on the other end of the, the business to the guys who were teaching you techniques how to pick up girls. Because if yeah. you believe that girls need to be picked up, you'll have to use skills and persistence and techniques. But if you understand what people are really like, you know that women don't need that from you. They just need to be able to believe in you yeah. and feel okay about you. Uh, but Girls can't believe in you if you're not even being yourself when you meet them. You're trying to copy some guy you saw on YouTube and some hidden camera in field pickup video. Like, that's not you, is it? They're teaching you how to have conversations about how to chat out with women. Like, you know, these assumption stacking and all this, like, always be closing. That has nothing to do with the way men and women really meet in real life. It's just, it's in resistance to it. In fact, it, it prevents actual being on a level with the girl that you've just met because you're, you're trying to put through this process that, that she's completely unaware of. <laughs> she doesn't even know the process that you've yeah. been taught. But how can she go through it? It's not the way she's been trained. So 
meeting people, understanding people, knowing that you're not the only one who's suffering through that. It, yeah, it just helps you get along with people better. So suddenly you're not uh, disconnected in the social realm because you... It's like when you meet people who have this very strong seeming front this mask example the very intimidating looking guy but he might be like a biker guy or some big tough guy i don't know um they have this kind of edge about them this you know don't fuck with me i meet guys like that from time to time and i get along great with them even though i'm not really like them i'm not intimidating i'm not a tough guy i don't have a knife and all this that they always treat me very well, like a brother almost, in mm. some cases, because I show them, hey man, I'm I'm one of you. Yeah, I'm I, I'm a bloke too who also has these problems, and you know, I can see you, I see you, I see you. It's cool. Don't need to be that character with me. It's the same with girls, of course. On the other end, people meet the tough guys and the intimidating guys. They usually put them on a bit of a pedestal and go, oh, mm-hmm. you must be quite handy. And Yeah, there's that too. Guy. That's it. There's that as well, which is the same thing again as when you meet somebody who is like your f- favorite author or movie star or something. If you're like, oh, man, you changed my life. I love what you do. You're amazing. I've had that conversation with all of their other thousands of fans. So they're going to treat you like a fan. Yeah. You probably won't end up going for a steak and kidney pie and spoons with them, you know? Whereas uh, if you're just normal with them, if you're just like on a level with them straight away and not say the usual things and ask the usual questions, they're going to be like, okay, this person is treating me as not just as that thing they presume that I am, I assume it to be. Anytime I've I've met somebody who I've kind of like followed or like one of these fitness or different events. I remember meeting uh, this a few years ago, Four Beyonce and the Icelandic strongman. He was in Game of Thrones. Mm. And yeah. um, I met him. There was a big queue and uh, I was uh, with my dad and my dad's wife at the time. Uh, and uh, they, they met him first and I met him after. And I was like, hey, how's it going? I was like, I was like, massive guy. Yeah. I'll, could you fancy putting me up on your shoulders and taking a bath? <laughs> I bet nobody's asked him that. <laughs> All right. He, he was like, no. Wait man. a minute. Did, did you just tell me that you met him in B&Q? No, at the uh, Strongman event I, I went to. Um, but yeah, B&Q would be. <laughs> I thought you said B&Q in there somewhere. <laughs> okay, when you watch this back before you upload it, see, look for that. <laughs> see, if, see if you can figure out what you said that I misheard as you met him in B&Q. <laughs> I can imagine him being cute, like lifting planks of wood. Or he's working in there because it's just so ideal for that section. <laughs> yeah, totally I stand it strong, man. Just wheelbarrows full of sandbags, <laughs> concrete. But yeah, I was like, I'm going to probably meet this guy once in my life, maybe. Uh, yeah. So I, you know, I'll make a bit of an impression. And, well, you know. Kabuffy was like, hey, just a quick photo. Hey, how are you doing? And, you know, back mm-hmm. of the continue whatever else they were doing but i think uh it's always kind of good just like like you said like not hold people to a pedestal and people are just people and they are they mm, sometimes <laughs> well yeah sometimes they're just robots to be honest uh yeah sometimes they're they're sometimes they're completely disconnected from their humanity uh but it, i guess that's one of the things that people do isn't it they uh they're a bit nasty but yeah, um, people generally uh, all looking for love in some way or are lacking love in their lives or are full of love and emanating love. But there's love in there somewhere. You bring your appropriate yeah, I did, I did, thing of love and then you connect in some way. I did a video on my channel when I first started doing the counter is that self-love is that ultimately you got to love yourself and, mm. you know, not your pet goldfish or, or your mom or your dad or your girlfriend is never going to love you as much as, as yourself. So um, self-love is the best thing you can do. Um, I had a conversation with my girlfriend about that last night, talking about all this stuff. Yeah. She, uh, 
it's quite profound some of the things that she comes out with uh we were having this conversation about like the love we have for each other mm. it was um it was very much non needy it was to be we have a good uh, understanding i know it's a lot of couples they're so codependent codependent yeah uh and it's yeah it, it's uh there's nothing worse than being with someone who uh who you make happy <laughs> rather like you're the only reason they're happy or they yeah. would not be happy without I mean, it's okay to be upset when you break up but not like oh that's the end of your happiness <laughs> that kind of thing we've all been there of course we've all had breakups i'm sure um i've had plenty to be honest but yeah i guess the older i've got the more experience the more i've broken up for better reasons and dealt with it better each time but there's always a, <laughs> a worse breakup around the corner there's always some new set of circumstances under which you break up but uh neediness yeah you've got to love yourself and uh, yeah it makes you a more lovable person yeah because you're not bringing problem person vibes you're not being a drain on their resources their time energy money attention love I think this conversation has been really good, Dave, and I appreciate your time. Um, Fun talking. I think, uh, I think no, I'm in a super strange mood. We've gone for hours, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> my eye is not because I'm tired. I'm actually wide awake. But yeah, I will yeah. Um, leave the links to people's group and make sure if you're interested in meditation, check Dave out. He's got some good stuff and he posts on your uh, Facebook. Uh, your Dave. meditation coach page yeah that's me i'm i'm usually more serious and professional you've got me in a totally laid back chilling out yeah. in the zone here in a bit of a funny mood as i said at the beginning of the recording i had a bit of a weird experience today that was a little bit terrifying to be honest uh yeah so yeah it's been, it's been good to chat actually yeah and good to chat not over a beer <laughs> this is a, yeah, I'm grateful for these opportunities. You know, it's good, it's good to maintain connections because that's one of the fears we have when we decide that we're not going to drink anymore. Like, will I lose? Like, who will be my friends? <laughs> so yeah, this, this is uh, <laughs> a good example of uh, ways to spend your time in a productive way. So it's really cool that you're doing this uh, one one video a day. That's a real like discipline commitment. Very yeah. It's definitely helped. The second me. time yeah. you've done it as well. So yeah. it's like, yeah, what a boss. Yeah. yeah, good shit, man. That is really good. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of your videos. I guess I can check any day and there'll be loads of them to look at. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate that. And I think it's, it's definitely it's a good habit for me. It's definitely helped me bring me out because you know, it's from like day one uh, a few weeks ago to day, I think, I believe this is 38. My confidence on camera and just general speaking, it's just that kind of compound effect of consistency is, you know, and that, that comes down with meditation as well. You know, your first few few days, you're not yeah. going to be the best. You're not going to be a monk and, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, there's one thing I'll mention before we go, <laughs> go on all night. Uh, one thing that I like to do is sit and just shoot five or six videos back to back without any preparation, like except for a topic or a title, just wrap on a topic for five minutes or yeah. whatever amount of time you know, it takes for me to make the point. And then when I upload, when I drip feed those videos on, onto my channels, people can see that you're active and see that you're there and they see that you're, you're in the business. You're not just some guy who posts a video once every fortnight or once every month or something. This tip, by the way, batch batching videos it means that you just get a lot more done in a much shorter amount of time yeah you get to learn how to trust in yourself and be confident to work without a script you get to see that people actually still like you even though you're not totally polished and prepared and all that and um if you're a 
like an online coach or you have a business where you hang your face off your business when you're the face of what you're doing when the reason you're doing videos is to create awareness of of what it, the, the value that you're bringing the service or product or experience that you're trying to make known to the right people that's out there batching just spend an hour one night recording five six videos edit them drip feed them onto your timeline it's like a cheap and easy and quick way to get lots of attention online yeah While teaching yourself how to be confident not at all i never watch my videos back ever really no from back i'll cringe too much look at me <laughs> like why would i want I, I just upload them very occasionally i will edit in the i'll drop something in very Keep occasionally this but i don't watch the whole thing through like oh look how awesome this video was oh, oh no look at it. i just I know that every time I watch myself back, I'm sure you do it too, is that you notice everything that you don't like about yourself, everything you're slightly ashamed of or embarrassed. Mm. If you just let it go, just put it out there. Um, the way you perceive yourself has nothing to do with the way people perceive yourself. There's always, people filter it through their own filters, so yeah. they're gonna see it in their own way. So you've just gotta trust. So when you come across as someone who's speaking with a bit of conviction, and you're just assuming that people will get you or believe in you which to be honest in this video a lot i noticed myself not doing but i didn't care anyway i'm not gonna make you stop and start again you know <laughs> i would never do that um again so um i just thought fuck it i'm just gonna do it i'm not gonna get all all, all up in my head and wanting to cut parts out and all that kind of stuff you know i did that once uh, earlier on and I never do that on my own stuff ever, but I'm not normally in such chaos when I start a video as I was when we started this call. Yeah. And I pick my right time to do the video. So in the early evening when I've done everything that I need to do, so I'm not stressed about other things, I can just talk to the camera and just come at it with love and yeah. uh, answer a question that someone's asked about meditation or dating or attraction or all that kind of stuff. So there you go. That's me rambling and rambling and rambling. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, I thought it was going all night, uh, but yeah. I, I'm like, it's, it's getting over that hurdle, isn't it? That initial kind of, you just need to do it. I think once you get going, mm. uh, you kind of hit flow and uh, yeah, you know. that's it as well. If you, if you do five or six in a row, you, you've hit flow by about the third one. Yeah, but your first two are going to be fine. You're 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 your harshest critic, so just upload those as well. Even if you think you look like an absolute idiot, you know. I'll uh, I'll post the links below the video, and uh, hopefully, guys will get you out. All right, cool. So thanks everyone for watching as well. And uh, yeah, thanks guys. I'm gonna do my evening routine.